And our third main topic today gets submitted to us by Landon Irvin, who writes, As I've heard, you love the first season of The Boys, and I gotta say I did too. The whole idea of a show like this is incredible, and out of the ordinary for this generation. The actors are phenomenal, and it's very entertaining, but as we know, season two of this show will be coming out. My questions for you are, what are you wanting to see out of season two? And do you think it can be as good or even better than season one? Thank you and bring on the filthy. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Landon. And Robert, yeah, we got a chance to see The Boy season one. I thought it sounded very cool. The graphic novel was obviously cool, but who knows if it's going to translate well. Season one blew me away, dude. Like, I loved it. What would you say about this? What's the potential and what are the challenges for something like uh, The Boys Season 2 moving forward? Well, first of all, I think the show, like the viewer, like our, our viewer, writer, he said it's a great, great, great show. And I think it's better than the actual source material that it was based on. And I think, you know, what's really interesting about The Boys, and this is true of the comic as well, is it's really an examination of, of if there are superheroes in the world, and by definition, all of us. It's really, uh, again, superheroes are just a proxy for everybody. Can we all be superheroes? But what does that mean going forward? What is the relationship? I mean, obviously, the characters in The Boys want to eliminate superheroes. I mean, the idea is let's get rid of them all because they're all evil, corrupt, horrible people. And if they're not, they will be eventually. So I really think that that moving forward, it's going to be interesting to see how are we going to examine wh where do superheroes now fit into the world? Do they fit into the world? And, and how do you reconcile that with what, say, Butcher wants? I mean, I do I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see. And especially The Watchmen is coming out, which is sort of yeah. dealing with the same issue. And we're going to, in a way, I kind of see The Watchmen as a extension of The Boys now, even though I shouldn't feel that way. But now we're getting shows, superheroes are very popular, but now we're getting these de deconstructions of what is the superhero myth. What does that mean to us if they really existed? And by definition, do we need superheroes? What, what, what do superheroes mean? And I think they're going to continue on. That's certainly what the comic does. And the comic, the comic, gets, the comic gets pretty outrageous. And I, <laughs> I, I think that they can do the same thing. I mean, I, I, how do you escalate what they've already done? I don't know. Uh, here's, I think The Boys Season 2 is going to face a massive challenge. I'll be honest with you. Now, you're right. I love the boys first of all we've had some great we talked about our, our top five best comic book shows on tv right now between the boys doom patrol and umbrella academy i i don't know if there's ever been a better time for for superhero stuff on television it's incredible and the boys is right near the top of that list for me i love it but while i am looking forward to the boys season two i will tell you what i don't know that if it's going to be good or not and right. here's why Part it's it's part of what you just so brilliantly laid out there, Rob. Part of the boys is there's a novelty factor, and novelty is sometimes seen as a bad word. No, if you use novelty right, it can be incredible, and they use that that novelty. Okay, superheroes are in the world and they exist, but they're dicks. Go, and you can do something on that and do something great. My concern, because I love the boys season. Well, my concern is. Does that get old going into a season two? You've done it. You did the shtick. You did the novelty factor. It's that. Can you keep just doing that? And will it have the same impact on us as an audience? I'm not saying it won't, but I'm saying I've got concerns. And I think if there's any challenges and obstacles in their own way, it's actually, ironically, their own success. The fact that they did that novelty and that shtick so well in season one and made it so entertaining and made it far deeper than it had any business being that will become kind of a, a hurdle i think it's like okay well we've seen there we've been there we've done that guys who don't like superheroes they want to get rid of superheroes superheroes are corrupt and they're evil and behind the scenes they're all this kind of stuff oh but maybe there's one or two good seeds among them we've been there done that will we have that feeling i'm not saying we won't and I'm not saying that I'm not excited about season two. I am. But I think there's any one big challenge coming out of it. It's going to be coming overcome. And 
what you often say, you know, uh, 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 comic book movies need to transcend their genre. Can season two transcend season one and become more and evolve? That's going to be the challenge. Aaron, you're hearing about something like this. What do you think some of the particular challenges are? And, and are you looking forward to The Boys season two? I'm very excited about season two. And one of the reasons why I'm excited is because there's going to be a lot of turnover. I mean, Madeline Sitwell, number one, is gone. So who's going to be running the seven? Who's going to be the behind the scenes mm, operational director of the seven? And where did the seven go once she's gone? Um, also, we saw a glimpse into Queen Maeve played by my friend Dominique McGilligan from Astronaut Wives Club. We saw a glimpse into Queen Maeve's conflict that she had with what was going on with Homelander and her desire to really help people, even though they're all a bunch of dicks. So I'm excited to see how that is explored. And as well, we saw what leads Homelander to be be the asshole that he is. We saw a little bit of his, his humanity and how he grew up. Um, I feel like we're going to have a little bit of a shift in um, good and evil. Starlight was, of course, you know, Miss Prim and Proper. I think that she's going to have a massive shift in season two. And so that's what I'm excited about seeing is the development of new characters that come in and how the characters that we've already seen are going to explore the conflicts that they have with their evil or actually maybe Starlight embracing her dark side. I just really, if I can just beg and plead whoever has anything to do with this show please stop making the deep the punchline of every joke like if i see <laughs> one more dolphin that he is trying to bang i'm going to have to be i'm going to be out if if the deep tries to bang a dolphin in season 2 I'm done. Although I gotta say, I like what they did with the deep. But I think you're right. They went far enough with it. John, they, you, they jumped the dolphin on that one. The dolphin. <laughs> you know, one of the things, too, that you could you could substitute, you could substitute celebrity for superheroes. Absolutely. Sure, and, that's and, what it is. And the rise of, you know, with our, everyone now has become the celebrity of their own Instagram feed. Mm -hmm. and, and they could further look at the transformation of culture. I mean, they talked about, Vote, vote, vote. Vought Industries wanted to have a superhero in every town. Well, what happens when that's true? You know, what happens when, when we start to see... you've got the MCU. See, we've got the global reach and everybody's a superhero. What happens when, when does everybody... When we're all on YouTube or when we're all on Instagram, do we all become corrupt? Is, is being a superhero inherently a corruptible or is it just something that corrupts everyone? Does absolute power always corrupt? Absolutely. And what happens when you have a group of superheroes that aren't corrupted and superheroes that are? I mean, there's stuff that they can really delve into that I think makes the show going forward. It could be pretty exciting. And along those lines, why do we have the expectation that superheroes should be inherently good? If they're, I mean, and I'm not saying that this is my opinion. I'm really just saying, good, you know, if you are good at your job, does it matter if behind the scenes, you do terrible things. And that's something that in Hollywood and in politics and, and, and in sports, we all read the news. We face it every single day. We have our heroes that we look up to, and then we find out that in their personal lives, they've done X, Y, and Z. And we have to decide, am I still going to listen to that music anymore? Am I still going to support that politician? Am I still going to watch that basketball game? You know, And so I think that that's also an interesting look at how much of a of a superhero's personal life matters when it comes to who we want to put our faith in if they're still able to get the job done. All right. And you're right. The whole allegory for it is huge. And by the way, one of the storylines I'm most looking forward to in season two, I want to see them go more with Queen Maeve with her relationship. Because that to me was actually that she was actually from a, she broke an apparently really good relationship. And I wanted to see more about that. So I'm looking that forward to that as well. That was the best scene she had in the entire oh, se I agree, season. I agree. And it was one I of the best I kept waiting because I was like, I know Dominique is a phenomenal actress, but I wasn't seeing it. And then that scene came on. I was like, there it is. So good. There and, it is. And in the airplane episode two. Yeah, like that, that was really good. <gasps> Especially at the end when she's reacting, when they're standing above the bluff, looking at the, the wreckage in the oh, sea. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, no. It was oh, some of the best stuff of the season revolved around. Anyway, guys, I want to know about you. You looking forward to the boys season two. But what do you see as me maybe being some of the hurdles that it's going to have to overcome some of the challenges it needs to meet going into season two? Jump down the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.